All right, hello neighbors. We're back in the kitchen today. I'm really excited because we're gonna do one of my favorite uh, comfort soups. You know, I'm doing a lot of soups lately because right now it's monsoon season. So there's a lot of rain. And when it rains, you want something a little bit more comforting. So back to the soup. In Korean, it's alkun, which means spicy. Sogogi bukguk, which is beef radish soup. Ninety nine percent of Korean soups or stews. We're gonna start off with an anchovy kelp uh, base broth. It's a perfect time to use one of these broth bags. I don't want to clean anchovies at the moment. And with these broth bags, um, I don't usually wait for the water to boil. You could just put it in while the water's still cold. Bring it up to a boil. And as far as the water amount goes, I used five standard cups. All right, guys. And quickly, once it comes to boil, let's put this down to a medium low and we'll let this simmer away for about 10 minutes. In the meanwhile, let's move. This is the start of the show. This is a uh, Korean radish. Normally it's it's this much bigger. Korean marts, they'll usually sell it by half or sometimes even by a third. You don't have to be exact, but... And then let's just peel this off. Two centimeter cuts. This looks like a good amount. And then we're gonna get our spring onions, our best friends here, of course, about your forearm length size. Since this is a soup, I don't wanna get too much spring onion in one bite, so I like to cut this up and then simple chop them into finger length pieces. And next, I'm using soybean sprouts. This works a lot better than mung bean sprouts, which you use for Vietnamese pho. That one doesn't stay as crunchy when boiled in hot water. So get the soybean sprouts. Remember, they have a little helmet, okay? <laughs> and then for this soup, oyster mushrooms work beautifully. So we're gonna do, let's say, uh, about three good handfuls of this. Give this a quick rinse as well. And then I also have a few shiitake mushrooms. Wow, this one's pretty big. Of course, it's optional. I like to mix up the mushrooms in here. It makes it taste even better. I have some beef brisket. This works the best. Uh, let's say 300 or 400 grams should be enough. Cut this into strips first. Bring it together and cut into bite-sized pieces. All right, and I think we're ready to rock and roll. <laughs> and now we'll check out on the broth. We'll take this one out, turn off the heat, and then we're gonna empty out the broth. That's because we wanna cook the beef, add some searing to that first. And then next we wanna, oh, to go. Woo! We're gonna start off with one or two tablespoons of sesame oil, get that bottom well coated, and I'll lightly sear this meat. One tablespoon of minced garlic, and that's gonna be the base flavoring. And give it a nice mix. And once you see that most of the red is out of the meat, oh, you see all that juice being collected down there along with the sesame oil and garlic, that's, that's all flavor. We're gonna add in our Korean radish now. That's two, and that's three. I would do like three heaping cups of the Korean radish in. Two tablespoons of Korean gochukaru. This is where the spice comes in. And then we're gonna season it with two tablespoons of soup soy sauce. Soup soy sauce is a bit saltier than regular soy sauce, but the color is lighter, so it keeps the broth from uh, over darkening. Mix this up. Beautiful, and you can see that the Korean radish is already starting to release a lot of liquid. So it's almost kind of like a broth of its own forming. And we're gonna stir this around for maybe one or two minutes. That's so that these shy radish pieces can continue to uh, release their liquids into that broth. And now we're going to pour our broth in. Everybody into the pool, don't hold on to the ledge. And I'm sure this is with most cultures, but the longer you cook soups or stews, the better it tastes. And so slow cooking is important. So what I'm gonna do for extra flavor here is I'm gonna reduce this to a low, low heat, put a lid on it, and let it gently simmer for 30 minutes. Timer on the clock, and start. All right guys, that's time. 30 minutes is up, and Wow. By now, the radish pieces should be soft. You see it goes right through. At this point, we're gonna add our mushrooms into the mix. This looks like a lot, but the mushrooms Then let's grab our soybean sprouts and then our green onions. Looks like a lot, right? Nah, it's gonna shrink up very quickly. All right, guys, and as it cooks down, our final flavoring. To give it some umami, we're gonna do one tablespoon of fish sauce and one final tablespoon of soup soy sauce. 
And we're doing the final seasoning now since the broth has reduced after that 30 minutes of boiling. If you do it before, it might turn out too salty. Let's give it a final taste. Oh, it needs just a little bit of salt. Let's do, I'm gonna do two large pinches of salt. Oh my God, that's the flavor right there. <laughs> turn off the heat here. I like to eat this like the restaurant style. This is a tukpegi serving bowl. This one is new to gochujar. It's made by the same uh, clean tukpegi company, zero absorption rate. Get it in here, hit it with the soup. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and the fun part, turn this on. Let's get this on a high heat, flame on, and we'll wait for our bowl. In the meanwhile, you get a bowl of hot rice. And neighbors, there it is. Look at that bowl. <laughs> Turn off the heat. Spicy Korean beef radish soup. Woo! I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna move this bowl. And be careful with this bowl. This is not meant for like little kids. Um, it's gonna stay hot throughout your whole meal. And woo, yeah, very hot. Just for a little bit of color, I'm gonna just hit it with a little bit of green onions. All right, and then the most important thing, this broth. And how do you eat this? You don't just eat this straight. Put it over your rice, all right? You get a little bit of your broth, put it over, mix it up, and then if you're expert, you can get all of that in one spoon. <laughs> Rice, radish, uh, mushrooms, and then some beef. Excellent. Going for the bite. Mm. I would say easily one of our best super stew recipes. This is a must try. You know, just a random thought, but these tukpegis, they're still very hot. They serve it at restaurants. Um, I mean, they serve it everywhere. Uh, but there was that case in the US where that lady sued McDonald's because the coffee was too hot. And now you see that warning label, warning coffee is very hot because of that lawsuit case. If that lady came to Korea, billionaire.